and gentlemen, I am the Mark of the Masters of the Metal Plan. Big Ray here to stay to talk some GFW. Oh, it's GFW for now. Hmm. Could be MWA, could be TNA again. I really don't know. But anyway, right now, it's GFW Impact Wrestling today. That's Impact Wrestling 9-7-2017. I am recording this 9-8-2017. And ladies and gentlemen, listen. First, I want to thank... All you guys who have supported us over the many, many years here at OneWrestling.com. But I got to let you know something. I'm not going to be here this week coming up. Because I'm going to Lost freaking Vegas. Yes, me and the beautiful Jennifer Diaz, my beautiful woman. We're going to jump on a plane from New York. And we're going all the way to Lost Vegas. What happened? Uh... I I didn't think you wanted to go, Carl. <laughs> By the way, it's Carl the cameraman. He's the steady hand of one wrestling. Yeah, I I can't, dude. I, I didn't I didn't know. No, 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 no. The ticket ticket's way too expensive. Do you drive? You can we talk about this afterwards, please? <laughs> oh god. I really hope he doesn't want to go with me and legit. Anyway, <clears throat> so with all that being said, nothing, Carl. I didn't say anything. Anyway, I'm going to have a blast. So I'm going to be away next week, and I'm not going to be doing anything. Like, So if you guys are looking for me at the Pro Wrestling Reflection, if you guys are looking for me on the Impact Attack next week, nothing. I am going to be taking a total vacation. The world of wrestling has me, well, has my head spinning. So it's just too much. Listen, guys. I could sit here and address the whole uh, GFW, the whole Jeff Jarrett, uh, you know, situation, and I'm gonna briefly touch on this before I jump into my Impact Wrestling review. And the fact is that you know, I, I, I am hearing that Billy Corrigan may be involved again. I'm hearing that ROH may be involved. I'm hearing that WWE may be involved. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what exactly is going to happen with the future of the company, but there's one thing I have to say, that no matter how many times they say this company is going to die, it never does, totally, technically. Um, I, for one, would love to see Billy Corrigan take this company, since he has full ownership of the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, and as you see, I have that belt hanging over here, and actually bring back, it, it'll be great if TNA could come full circle. I really love the vision that Billy Corrigan, the passion that he had behind uh, what he wanted to do with the company, and I think he would be, in my opinion, the best fit. Now, with all that being said, there may be a chance that he won't be able to obtain or 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 hold on to the TNA uh, library, which is right now owned by Anthem, unless they want to sell. And they will probably sell to the highest bidder. The highest bidder will probably be the WWE, who want to own that. And with that being said, if the WWE did buy that, then we get the broken gimmick back in the WWE. Even though today, <clears throat> I did see a video with Matt Hardy. At, well, it wasn't just Matt Hardy. Yes, it was broken Matt Hardy. Yes, that was horrible. But you know what I mean. So... I mean, it's a catch-22. I really do hope that they can figure something out. Uh, I, I Listen, next week, I'm going to be on here with uh, with Sanjay Dutt. And um, I believe, uh, I forgot who else the other person is I'm going to be on the call with. But I know it's a big conference call. And they're going to be talking about the future of GFW. So, guys, you're going to have to tune in. And if you haven't seen the last press conference I was on, I was on with... Um, with uh with Johnny Impact, formerly Johnny Nitro, John Hennigan, uh, what else did he call himself? Uh, oh yeah, Johnny Mundo, and of course John Morrison with the WWE, and now he's Johnny Impact. So uh, really cool stuff going on. And, and with all that being said, let's jump into this this show. Now last week had was a really good show, it was a solid show, really well put together. This week, not so much, and it was just too many video packages, and it felt like they were just filling in time. And, and I think um, <clears throat> and there's a good chance. That Theodore R. Long was running the things, uh, running things backstage because holla holla holla, everything was a freaking tag match. We start the the, the first match was the Trevor Lee versus Caleb Colony and Sanjay Dutt and Petey Williams. And I gotta be honest with you, Petey Williams looks absolutely wonderful. Yes. Anyway. It looks fantastic, and Sanjay, uh, who gets the hot tag in the match, he actually comes in. He goes absolutely ballistic. At the end of the match, we have Petey Williams, who hits the Canadian Destroyer for the 1-2-3. So Petey Williams looking really, really strong. And then we have, well, LAX is Santana and Ortiz, another tag team match, defending their tag team titles versus Bolden and Wentz. Ooh. Oh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, it was more of a squash match, basically. And LAX uh, basically hit the... Um, 
what we call the uh, street sweeper for the one, two, three. But it wasn't what happened during the match that was important. It's what happens after the match. And I find myself saying this a lot with Impact Wrestling as they continue to push storylines ahead. So LAX goes over, and then we have Ohio versus everyone, or OVE, or like Conan says, ovaries. Unbelievable. I actually kind of I pop for that one. It's pretty funny. But OVE, you know, we have Jay Chris who says, you know, LAX, they, they claim to be family, but they're not really family. Not like we are. We are but like we are, but not like we are. You know, we're brothers. And so basically put over the fact that they're legit brothers, which they are. You have the dark side, the light side, the yin, the yang. You know, the, the whole duality thing. They have the whole thing going, the whole gimmick going. Um, right now, not a huge fan of, of OVE. I just can't get into them um i do love reno scum who are making a comeback they are actually coming back and by the way welcome back djz um he made his uh, his comeback in mexico over at triple mania which is pretty awesome we'll talk about that a little later on but but yeah i mean they're gonna be fighting uh well they're gonna be going up against the tag team champs over in tijuana mexico and uh i don't know man i just i just can't get behind ove maybe it's just me uh they're good they just there's something missing, and I think that team is a team that's solidified and should be solidified as a heel tag team. These guys should be going over dirty. They should be doing the worst of the worst. Um, I, it, it's a little due to the size, and, and again, you can say, oh, well, look at the Young Bucks. I think the Young Bucks are bigger than these guys, to be honest with you, but um, listen, LAX, they're big boys, and these guys can go. So this is going to be a great match nonetheless, so I'm interested to see what happens over the Crash promotion. And then we have uh, Holla Holla Holla, yet another tag team match, but this is this is the knockout. So you got the ladies here with Taryn Terrell, Sienna, with KM in the corner, by the way, versus Gail Kim, future uh, WWE Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Really, I think that's going to happen. With Braxton Sutter. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, Listen, this match... It was weird because at the beginning of the match, you have well, you have Gail Kim who gets most of the heat in the match. When I say heat, it means she got beat up <laughs> majority of the match, and uh, f finally she tags in Allie, and Allie's looking pretty damn good as she uh, takes over. You know the whole you know takes over the whole match. She's laying people out left and right. She is doing her thing, and she's looking more confident. Her character is, as we know, as Cherry Bomb. Allie is just one of the best in-ring workers and again it was just great but KM tries to get involved and he grabs her leg and listen Braxton Sutter does not want to he doesn't want nobody touching this woman let alone some greasy guy like KM who should be wrestling more in my opinion I love that guy and anyway uh so Braxton Sutter and KM go fighting to the back and you have Ali who goes to the top rope who again Josh Matthews Josh Matthews puts her over as a colorful flying Easter egg basically. And I think she looks beautiful. I think the colors look great on her, but again, that's my opinion. I would love to know what your opinion is. Please leave your comments here below at onewrestling.com or YouTube backslash one wrestling video. That's one wrestling video on YouTube. Anyway, uh, and please subscribe, guys. I'd appreciate it. You know, puts a you know, a couple of coins in my pocket. Helps me out. Makes me, you know, be able to pay the rent. Please. Okay, thank you. Anyway, so thank and I actually heard a couple of coins dropping. That's amazing. Uh, subscribe to me below, by the way, guys, at Big Ray Show on Twitter, on Big Ray Show at Instagram, and also on Snapchat, which I never use. But, you know, we go into this. Uh, so so these guys, so you got Braxton and Cam going off in the fight. Allie goes to the top rope. She does a beautiful cross body drop. But there was a match back in the day at WrestleMania 1 with Wendy Richter and Lonnie Kai. And Lonnie Kai hit the flying body splash. But, you know, Wendy Richter with the momentum took her over and pinned her for the 1-2-3. But the only difference here is, well, uh, Sienna kind of grabbed her tights. A lot of her tights. And she got the dirty pin for the 1-2-3. Now, again, it wasn't what happened during the match that was important. It's what happened Stay with me after the match. And what happened after the match, we have the heels who attack Gail and Allie. And they actually have Allie in the ring, and she is getting the living daylights beaten out of her. But then we have the demon princess, the demon warrior. We have well, Rosemary, who comes fresh fresh off of Mexico. Uh, and she comes in, and she clotheslines both Sienna and Taryn. She sets up the Red Wedding, and we have we have uh, uh, Taryn Terrell, who pulls her off. And it was just like Bendelum. Finally, it's two-on-one until... Taya finally, Taya Valkyrie finally makes her appearance. She is actually the significant other of that Johnny Impact. If you guys didn't know that, a little stooge report there. Uh, she slowly makes her way to the ring. She distracts um, the heels and uh, enough that they turn their attention to her. And they turn their attention away from, from Rosemary. It looks like Rosemary's like, oh, that's my homegirl. She's here to help me out. Until, uh, yeah, 
and, um, Taya kind of attacks Rosemary. Yeah. So, I guess she's a bad girl. And uh, that's what happens. She leaves Rosemary laying out. So, they're going to move forward with this. Now, listen, guys. If you've never seen Taya Valkyrie wrestle before, do yourselves a favor. Uh, check out some of the Lucha Underground, some of the AAA, some of the Mexican stuff, and, and just the indie stuff in general. She is awesome, solid, and not bad to look at at all. But remember, if you want to date with her, you're going to have to get past Johnny Impact. And that guy is a freaking beast. Um, I mean, he does parkour, mixed martial arts, a little bit of everything. It's pretty intense. <clears throat> Then we have Jim Cornette in the ring. And Jim Cornette's in the ring. He's putting over Johnny Nitro. I mean, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact. And Johnny Impact says, look, it doesn't matter who wins this match, whether it's whether it's uh, Seidel or whether it's Eli Drake Dummy. Yeah, I want to win. I, I want to uh, meet up with, I would like to fight. I would like a chance at the championship with whoever, whoever goes over. It doesn't matter to me. And, you know, pretty much um, Jim Cornette's like, yeah, I think you deserve it well. I got to tell you guys something. Uh, Low key comes down with uh, LAX, and uh, he is um, serious, like a lead period. Uh, I'm talking like this because usually Low key, when he cuts a promo, he will cut the promo like this, and he speaks like this. And no matter how angry he is, and no matter what he says, he always speaks like this. But not this time around, buddy. I have a feeling this may have been the night because remember these matches are pre-taped that they might have told Loki that yeah you're not going to be the man and you're not going to be the champion and I think Loki might have been shoot upset what I'm saying is that the guy looked pissed for real he cut actually one of the best promos he's ever cut in his entire career even cussing um, yeah really really interesting stuff guys moving forward and uh, he says he's gonna tear uh, Johnny impact apart well there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be some hell to pay and I'm sure next week on impact wrestling we're gonna see what happens between these two men but as you guys know uh, Loki is no longer part of the uh, the company so I'm wondering how they're gonna write him off it's gonna be very interesting so now we have Joseph Park backstage and we have Grado uh, and Joseph and I'm talking I'm trying to do a Joseph Park imitation not good but we have we have <clears throat> Grado. And uh, they're basically outside. And Grado's like, look, I have to end this with Laurel because, you know, she's Canadian. It's not going to help me out. And, you know, Joseph Park, he agrees. And, he, you know, he, Joseph Park turns and he goes, and I love you, man. You know, Joseph Park is really, really loving this guy. And finally, he turns to uh, Laurel and he says, listen, Laurel, I'm not going to be able to marry you. Uh, you know, it's better that it happened than never happened at all. And gives her all these, all these really cute things. And he breaks up with her. Then Laurel started hearing voices in her head, a la Randy Orton, smearing her lipstick, and it looks like we'll be seeing a uh, maybe a darker version of Laurel Van Ness uh, coming very, very soon to your Impact Wrestling near you. Um, I think that's going to happen. Now, I was talking to Ben Hameen. I was just recording the Impact uh, attack over at Hacker Hameen. Y'all log on to www.prowrestlingtees.com backslash Ben Hameen. Buy a shirt. Um, yeah, check it out, man. A lot of cool stuff. The Conspiracy Horseman, all that good stuff over there. But yeah, man, uh, I told Ben, I said, Ben, you know what would be an amazing idea? Now, you know Joseph Park would do anything for his buddy, right? Joseph Park looks, I mean, he loves the guy. Does he love him enough to marry him as we know same gender uh, marriages are legal and Joseph Park is a man and he's American and this could be an amazing storyline this could be a funny storyline this could be an innovative storyline like a legit gay marriage they live together they cook together somebody goes to visit to make sure that he's really an American and they're basically sharing a bed they're sharing a household. They're like, and you can even, I mean, you can go so many different ways. I mean, you can even start a legit romance between these guys or bromance, whatever you will. I mean, listen, it is the year 2017, guys. And if you're not over it, get over it, okay? This is possible. This may happen. This is my idea. Book it. All right. So now we go on and listen, I'm not going to go through all this. It's just, my God, they have DJZ. They talk about DJZ coming back again. It was fantastic. A video package, right? All right, then we move on. Commercial break. Then we go on. They, they they kind of finally touch on the whole Rosemary stuff, but not. They focus more on Jeff Jarrett getting pissed off with the Parker backstage and looked all crazy. And it just didn't look good and didn't make Jeff Jarrett look good. And I can listen, guys, if you want to hear my, my honest thoughts on why I think they did this, please go over to the, to uh, Hacker Hameen. Anywhere you listen to your favorite audio content on Podbean.com. I think it's a, a Bin Hameen 
uh, dot podbean.com, something like that. Just look for Ben Hameen anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. Look for the Impact Attack. I get really deep into my thought process regarding uh, Jeff Jarrett and, and what he did, but uh, why I think they allowed this video to get out. Uh, just really weird stuff, and it was real. It was legit, real heat backstage. But, uh, but again, um, listen, they all in all, they're like, oh, it's a positive experience. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know, it's just weird. Then we have a freaking like, Desmond Xavier video package. Then we have, uh, what else? They, oh, Jesus Christ. They had the, the, the Edwards uh, package, a video package about freaking Garza. Like, like everyone. I mean, the burrito was out. It was just crazy. And then we have... Dick Justice, or as they call him on Impact, Richard Justice, and he's backstage, and man, he's hurting something good. And uh, the fact of the matter is that, you know, Mackenzie Mitchell's backstage, he's like, well, what are you doing here, basically? I'm paraphrasing. And he goes, oh, I gotta be ready. And he's squatting, and oh, man, is he squatting? You can see he's in pain, because yeah, Congo Kong really let him have it last week, and he's still really selling that stuff. Um, dude, I'm gonna try to get him on. This guy's just freaking awesome. Love Dick Justice, uh, or Richard Justice, as we call him, Super Cop. He's amazing. Check him out, guys. He's all over social media. And then we have the main event. We have Eli Drake, dummy. Yeah. Uh, we have Eli Drake, who basically uh, defends his championship. And, of course, he has Chris Adonis in his corner versus Matt Seidel for the Global Force Wrestling Global Championship. It's very difficult for me to say that. I'm used to saying world title. This was a solid, solid match between both men. Uh, again, Chris Adonis getting involved multiple, multiple times. At one point in the match, we have Chris Adonis, who actually slips the title into the ring now. Eli Drake tries to use the title, but nope, Matt Seidel a little too quick for him. And uh, Chris Adonis, I'm sorry, Matt Seidel goes to the top rope, and we have, again, another distraction by Chris Adonis, which leads uh, the referee to kind of like, kind of, hey, what are you, get off the freaking apron. What are you doing over here, Adonis? And while this is happening, well, Eli Drake, who was on the floor with the belt right next to him, gets up, takes that belt, and smashes it over the head of Matt Seidel, hitting the gravy train for the one, two, three. I... I didn't like this, and I'll tell you why. Good match, though. The booking of the match was was a little off for me, and I'll explain to you why. The reason why I feel this is off is because you just made this guy your champion. I know he's a bad guy, but I think he had to use too many props and weapons and everything to beat Matt Seidel. I know Matt Seidel beat uh, Bobby Lashley. I would have booked it as a, as a lucky spot for him. Uh, I just think it could have been done a hell of a lot better. My opinion, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to know what you guys think. Again, I always ask you guys to please subscribe here to One Wrestling Video here on YouTube. Uh, again, hit us up at OneWrestling.com. Hey, give me a follow on Twitter at Big Race Show. Let me know what you think of these reviews. Please support our stuff. Um, a and um, you know, love goes out to the people in Florida. But apparently, this morning in freaking Mexico, we have an 8.0 earthquake. Uh, now there's a tsunami warning warning in Japan. Listen, this, this is the time, guys. That we need to just really band together as human beings and, and just really be there for each other and just really pray with each other and love each other. And whether you believe in God or not, I do. And I pray that God just kind of sends his uh, love and blessings down, guys. Send love. Give food, guys. Please, price, price gougers, don't deal with those people, man. What they're doing over there in Florida is disgusting, in my personal and humble opinion. But uh, this is a very tumultuous time in our country, in our world, as we speak. And I just pray that God have uh, have mercy on us as we move on. And I pray that uh, that you guys be blessed and, and that you guys are okay wherever you are. And if you're in the Texas area, if you're in the, the Florida area, if you're in Japan, if you're in Mexico, wherever you are in the world watching this. And we know we get a little bit of views from everywhere all over the world. I love you guys and I appreciate you guys. And I pray nothing more but, but, but safety and blessing is in love upon your lives. So thank Thank you guys for joining me here at OneWrestling.com. Hey, I always say this. I would do this for a living, but if I couldn't, I'd do it anyway. Why? Because I love talking wrestling. I love talking with you guys once a week here. But as for next week, I'm jumping on the plane, and I'm going to Viva Las Vegas. See you guys. Oh, oh, no, I won't see you next week. See you the following week here at OneWrestling.com. Thank you. Peace.